Well, everyday pieces is actually a very good way to describe them because that's exactly what they were when I shot them. Um, I lived in this community. All of these things that are that are shown here were within within a mile or, or maybe slightly over in some cases of my home. And these were my neighbors, and these were my friends, and these were the people that lived in my community, and uh, these were places in my community, and these were the things that were happening at that time. And I just happened to be taking snapshots. Uh, my daughter looked at these pictures and said, I remember these. They were on our coffee table when I was growing up. She's now 47 years old. Um, so, yes, uh, everyday pictures, I think, is, is a good way to describe them. And, uh, well, it's kind of a microcosm of my life at that time. Remembered places. And um, uh, I put the word my remembered places in the front of it because some people never saw these places. Um, at that time... Los Angeles was just as segregated as any, as any other city in the United States. And uh, there were people that never, ever even realized that, uh, that Watts existed. Uh, there was one freeway that went through it, the Harbor Freeway, but it went through. It didn't stop there. Uh, there, were, there was uh, Imperial Highway that people went along Imperial Highway to get to the LAX, to the airport but nobody stopped in between. So it was almost like the black community was isolated, completely apart from the rest of the city. And it had a different philosophy, it had a different sociology, it had uh, different um, approaches, um, and it even had different religions than most of the rest of the city. So I guess without really knowing it, I was recording a history that's not really included in, uh, in the normal history of Los Angeles. Well, actually for me it gets a little emotional. Um, behind us here, I don't know if, if you can see it, but there's a lady with uh, a baby. Um, I, I was at a Watt Summer Festival and I had my camera with me. I was walking along and this lady stopped me and uh, she asked me to take a picture of her baby. And uh, she said, the baby's father is in jail, and he's never seen the child. So she wanted to send him a picture. I took the picture and uh, came back the next day to give it to her. I never saw her again. Uh, I don't know what happened with that, but I often, you know, even, even now, I, I wake up sometime wondering if he ever had a chance to see his baby, um, if she ever had a chance to you know, to really relate to that child, what, it, what his father was or who his father was. Uh, and in our community, that happened way too often. Uh, there, was, there were other things. For example, the bullet holes over there in the window, um, that was as a result of uh, April, I'm sorry, December the 8th, uh, 1969. The very first operation by the SWAT uh, arm of the LAPD was an attack on the uh, Black Panther headquarters at 41st and Central. I was an ambulance driver at that time and got in there accidentally, frankly, and uh, I took a, a number of pictures. Most of them are not displayed here today, but um, I also belong to a group then called the, the, uh, the uh, Photographic Medium. I got to a phone booth. We didn't have cell phones in those days. I got to a phone booth and I called the president of, of the photographic medium, told him what was going on. And they, we sent a bunch of uh, young photographers in there and took pictures. And that was, that was actually, I think that's the only record of that particular event. Um, the photographers are spread all over the place now. But at one point, the um, church here in the LA area bought the entire exhibit. And I understand it traveled all across the country and was even shown in Vietnam uh, right, at, right before the end of the, of the uh, Vietnam War. So, yes, um, I don't even remember what the question was, but, <laughs> but I, uh, I have to say that, uh, oh, you were asking 
my emotional response to these pictures. It's very emotional to me. It's a, it's a part of my life, and uh, you know, in, looking at each picture brings back something. For example, there's a picture over there that's on the side of a building. It says, "Arm yourselves," and that was a, a message that went out from the Black Panther organization after uh, the attack on the at 41st and Central, after the uh, killing of the Black Panther leader in Chicago, after the shooting uh, in San Francisco, New Orleans. They recognized that the Panthers weren't going to be able to do the thing that they were established to do, which was to defend and protect their community. So at that point, they, they felt that the only way that the black community was going to survive was to arm themselves and fight back. So there was a message on the side of the building. So yes, um, there were all sorts of things that uh, took place during those times. And interestingly, I was saying to someone here earlier that I, at the time, you know, these were snapshots. These were just the things that went on in my community. And I, when you, you know, when you're in the middle of it, you don't realize what's happening. But looking back, I can see the progression. I can see how things move from stage to stage. I can see how uh, the thinking of individuals uh, affected their lives. I mean, it affected their fashions, their hairstyles their religion, their philosophies, everything.